we're wanting to focus our attention upon being strong in the Lord, in the strength of his might. We see that in Ephesians 6 and verse 11, where we're to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. When we speak about the devil, we need to recognize that he is indeed our enemy. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5 and verse 8, that as a roaring lion, he seeks about whom he may devour. He wants to destroy you and me, especially God's people. He's not through with us yet, and he has the world right now. And so there's a sense of destroying, but he does so through his power. And part of that power, we've seen Jesus coming to this earth, take it on flesh and blood, Hebrews 2, 14, that he might destroy the power of the devil, which is the fear of death. When we're in sin, we ought to fear death because we're going to meet the Lord in judgment. We don't know if we're going to be raised from the dead. Is this world all there is to it? I may become more worldly. And the fear of death, we don't know what lies ahead of it. Jesus removed that fear by dying for us and being raised on the third day to give us the hope of heaven, not only the forgiveness of sins. Jesus came to this world to destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3 and verse 18. Because the wages of sin we deserve is death. But indeed the free gift is God's eternal life. But Jesus came to destroy the devil's works. What is that? The consequences of sin and death. It is through the sin of Adam, he introduced death into the world. And he died spiritually and he died physically, as we see taking place in the first book of our Bibles. And Jesus came to destroy that. We're going to be saved from our grave. We're going to be saved from our sins. And therefore, he becomes a formidable enemy. What makes him so formidable? I suggest unto you this because he's a liar. He takes reality and he gives you something else. He gives you a smoke screen. Think of this as reality. But he is a liar. You can't trust him. And John 8, 34, when people are trying to kill Jesus, he says he's a liar and a murderer. He's been that way from the very beginning. So he's powerful. He's formable. He's out to destroy us. And therefore, we need to understand his wiles, the wiles of the devil, Paul says, that we are to be aware of and to be able to stand against that with the whole armor of God. What do we mean by wiles? It means deception. It means somebody is crafty. Somebody is shrewd, not necessarily to help you and give you a better way of doing things, but will set it forth the idea of destruction, because we go, we want our will to be done. The devil allows us to do that. It's about me and not about God. So we're talking about deception. Do you notice the word method in the Greek word wiles? I do. And begin to realize that part of the deception of the devil, he has a method. And he, he just plays it over and over and over again. We need to understand that if we're going to stand against that. And he, he sets forth his destructive plan by appealing to us in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. John tells us in 1 John 2, 15 through 17, that we're not to love the world. Why? Because all that is in the world, then talk about things, he talks about our relationship to things. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the vainglory, or the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And will not abide. Because, but we give all our hopes upon that, it dies with those things. Now with Jesus, that same playbook is set forth. Different order. Lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. Is the way he may play it a different order to you, what it brings to you. But Jesus was tempted that same way. The lust of the flesh, he hungered. The pride of life, jump off from the top of the temple and God's going to take care of his, his people. And here's all the kingdoms of the world that you can cast your eyes upon. I'll give those to you if you will worship me. Jesus used the antidote. It is written. He went to God's word. Are we to, we're to arm ourselves with the whole armor of God, which we'll see in a few moments is indeed the word of God that we read of, have we had in our hands. He has a method. What is that method? Well, I'll take you back to the first woman and man, man and woman, Adam and Eve. 
and how he approached them. Using the same avenue, but he had a method. And this is how deceptive he is. Because when we look at Genesis 3, he doesn't just stop out and just tell a lie. He chips away at absolute truth. Did he say that you cannot eat of any tree in the tree of, of, of the Garden of Eden? <laughs> he wasn't. He just questioning. He makes you have to think, well, yeah. And what did the woman do? I went back to absolute truth. There's one tree we can't eat thereof, and in the end thereof, when we do, we'll die. And exactly, he contradicts. This is where he lies. He contradicts the consequences of your sinning. If I got you, I'm not going, I'm not going to lie about, was there a question about that? I'm just questioning it. And then she is following along. Yes, the day we eat thereof, we shall surely die. And he lies, no, you will not die, verse 4. And then he accuses the motives of the lawgiver, God. You know the reason he gave you that law? That you not to eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Because you'll be just like God, knowing good and evil. That's why he hiding it from you. He just lays it out there. Crafty, isn't he? Shrewd, isn't he? There's his wiles. There's his method. And then he goes the route. Now here's something that looks appealing. It's good for food. Lust of the flesh. And it's good to look at, lust the eye, and it will make you wise. You'll be just like God. And all of a sudden, man begins to place themselves and their glory instead of the glory of God. He has a method. He's shrewd. He's crafty. And wouldn't it be something that God's word gives you all of those details of why Jesus came if he's just a figment of man's imagination? I've got to have something that's called evil because I think it is, and I'll just put the idea of the devil, but he really doesn't exist. That's the big lie. And God's word exposes that. He's real, he's crafty, he's shrewd, he's out to destroy us. And we need to deal with that. We need to stand against the wiles of the devil. And we do that by putting, oh, the whole armor of God. And one of the things we need to understand is that, indeed, his deception sometimes, not direct as Genesis 3, but sometimes it's through men. And the Bible gives us plenty of examples. There are false apostles, they are false brethren, and they are false apostles. And they make themselves as being apostles of Christ, but they're not. They're false. But don't worry about that. You know why that can happen? Because Satan can transform himself into an angel of light. If seeking to do that, his messengers, men, will do that as well. And so he uses men. There's the doctrines of demons in 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. That indeed people are going to fall away from the faith in the last days. They'll give heed to the doctrines of demons. Doctrines that are inspired by the demonic spirits under the headship of the devil. They will give in to that. And indeed, how does he work on it? Corrupt men. Branded in their own conscience. They could speak a lie and not even blink. Without even changing facial expressions. And he said, I'll use that guy. Already corrupt. And they will bring forth their error. In fact, the only other time we find the wiles in the New Testament is the wiles of error in Ephesians 4 and verse 14. Where indeed we're not to be children that are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up. See, we're no longer children. We mature in the same word of God that we're to gird ourselves with and arm ourselves with so we can accomplish standing against, not Satan, but standing against the wiles of the Satan. That's what we're looking at. But he's real. And we know the end of him will come in the last day. But he's going to take as many as he can with him to hell. And we need to realize the reality of him, how shrewd he is, and how that happens with human beings presenting, presenting error. And we come back to the word of God in order to understand the truth thereof. So we need to stand firm, armed with God. And one of the things that God tells us to do in this context is that we need to know our spiritual enemy. That's why we've done what we've done so far this morning. Know your spiritual enemy. You're not wrestling with flesh and blood, though that teacher is teaching the doctrines of demons. That's not the battle. It's looking behind what's behind that. 
And it's the philosophy of men. It's, a, it's a how the world wants to go in their own way and not glorify God, but glorify themselves. And therefore, we need to realize he's a spiritual enemy. He's formable. We've got that. Secondly, we need to know that he, God, is the source of our strength. Notice, we are to arm ourselves with the word of God, the whole armor, because we're going to be strong in the strength of his might. And we're to be strong in the Lord. Ephesians 6 and verse 10. It's not that I have the antidote, how to defeat Satan, and listen to my strategy. I have a method to deal with his methods. But as it inspired of God, he's the one that sent Christ to destroy him. And he's done that. It's just a matter of time for us to know it. Until then, he's trying with his lies to deceive us. We're to be strong in the Lord. We know our enemy. We know where our strength is. So we need to arm ourselves with that. So we gird ourselves. We prepare ourselves for battle. There's an end to this. We're going to stand against the wiles of the, of the, of, of the devil. So we put on the armor of God's word, which will apply. And we're to put on the whole armor because he introduces prayer. He adds prayer to the benefit of the word of God in our lives. Prayer becomes very important. And therefore, we're going to be praying to God. We're going to be knowing God's word. That prepares us. But we're just looking good. And we don't really conflict with, you know, contradict. No, we don't call anybody doctors of demons and that sort of thing. It's, they're talking outside the box. It's, it's, it's be, let that go. No, you're aware of that, how he works through people. And you realize it's time for battle. I've got to indeed fight. I've got to fight the good fight of faith. Back to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, we began to see that indeed we're to arm ourselves, put on the whole armor of God, be strong in the strength of his might. I know my enemy, it's not flesh and blood. So what do I do? Wherefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. I need to stand against the wiles of the devil. That sounds good. But now I've got to go fight. I've got to withstand. You've got to withstand if you're going to overcome him. You've got to withstand that. And the evil day and then having done all to stand. Done what? Fight. Battle. I can't see him. That's right. <laughs> He's working through error. He's working through the world around us. And we need to be able to fight against that. And we have the word of God in order to accomplish that. Let's make some application. Parents, you're in a battle against the devil in raising your children. And I think it's good while some of you have infants and little babies to realize what's going to be my method. How are we going to deal with the things of the world that we have today that maybe some parents didn't deal with? 20, 30, 50 years ago, or even a decade ago, things are changing. So what are we going to do? We're going to stand firm. We're going to equip ourselves with the word of God because we realize the devil is out to grab our children. That's not being paranoid. I think we see it unfolding with transgendering. Remember changing your gender? It's not like I'm bisexual, or I'm a homosexual, or I'm a lesbian. That's evil. But we have now, starting young, with those in authority of teaching, and they have their agenda. And really it's the devil being able to work, and we're going to start on school-age children. How does... How does that work? Open your eyes. You don't have to guess. You're seeing the conflicts that are before us. They're approaching children as they reach the age of puberty, four, eight, ages eight to 14. Very vulnerable time in the emotions of boys and girls. As they're becoming 
adults in their bodies. And there's great emotional changes and your mind is there. It's very susceptible to, to maybe, well, which way should I go? That's where parents need to be standing here with the Word of God. From a babe, you know the Scriptures. And you start early. And you begin to realize that here are they're vulnerable. But you know, our school board wouldn't do that. Really? We, we, that wouldn't happen in our school. Because what, what are they, they doing? Well, what's being done is gender dysphoria, where I don't like my body. I'm not happy in my body. And you're getting at a time when people's bodies are changing. They're young people. They are children. They don't know how to deal with that. And parents ignore it. No, it's critical time. Because the devil's not ignoring it. Because all of a sudden, I don't like the body I'm in. Why do I like to be a tomboy if I'm a girl? Things are changing. And all of a sudden, it's easy to communicate. I've got a solution. You don't like your body? I've got a solution. And it's all based upon lies. The school authorities begin to divide parents from their parental responsibility and their authority. They will hide the agenda. Since you don't like your body, I've got, we've got an answer for you. And we'll start changing you on some drugs, preparing you for surgery. And we won't tell your parents. Dividing parents from their children at a critical time when it's the responsibility and authority of the parents should be there. That's being taken away. And don't, don't even know it. Of what they are telling them at school. They've got their psychiatrists. They've got their people in place. Who's they? Well, just wake up and you find the school board. They decide this is the route we should go. You've got teachers coming out of schools of higher learning where indeed this idea is, is, is catching all and they think that's the way it'll be and, and they start accusing you and what happens, they hide it from their parents because their parents would be against it and you know what? They hate you. They hate you. So we won't tell them either. We'll protect you. We're the protector, not the parents. How did that happen? Craftiness. The wiles of the devil. And so that's why we have to keep it quiet. So people aren't even coming out and seeing the destructive nature, and they're, being, they're giving information now. It's not just guessing. People have gone through the surgeries where they've mutilated their healthy bodies because they just didn't like their body, and they had a solution. Who had a solution? I'm saying the devil did. It divides parents from children. It divides... Children from God who created them. Genesis 1.27, he made male and female, created man and woman. Male and female created he them. And it's a biological fact, and we're seeing that proof over and over and over again. When girls and women, young women, train themselves in athletic competition, and they realize, well, that's a trans, but he's still a man in his body. And we just overlook it in our society. Some do. But that's coming to the forefront too. What's that based upon? A lie. A lie. You're not, you can have, you can change your hormones and you can have surgery and it will not change the fact that that's a biological male. And it'll be that way because only God made two. But we don't believe God. We believe it. what you want to be, I can be it. And all the destructive things they're doing. People who have changed and trans are looking at their surgeries. They're looking at what they have gone through. And what we begin to realize that how is that being communicated? Well, you see all sorts of school districts across the, uh, the world, but 
it, it, in our country, but social media is here. It's here. It's been here a while. Remember Facebook just takes a picture of the family, share it with our family members. Oh, that's old fashioned now. Snap, check, chat, chat. We got Instagram. We got all sorts of social media. And that's where young people are having access to. And that we need to understand that's a theater for spiritual warfare. It could be used for good. But parents, you need to stand up, as we all do, and realize that here's maybe something's used for good, but what's happening? Hours and hours is spent on our phones, and young people have that. And they begin to be depressed. And they may go through anxious moments of my body is changing. But then they begin to be depressed because they're not what they want to be. And I, I hate my body and, and my parents are against this. And all the conflict happened. It didn't have to happen that way. It all based upon lying. And the pride of men glorifying themselves instead of God. And realize that here is a media that we've going to have to deal with. I don't think it's going to Because you've got to have your phone, don't you? And all the things it can lead you to, but parents need to be aware of it. You need to gear up for battle. And you equip yourself with God's word. And we have, we have these interesting phrases about the gospel. But they're meaningful. Give a few examples. We need to help our children see through the fog of devil's lies because you need to shod your foot, feet with the, with the preparation of the gospel. Well, how's that going to fight social media? Is that I'm going to have in my children, that's what you're trying to do, we're going to spend our time and direct our minds to the word of God to realize that here is a route that you can go. And you've already seen the route that you can go with social media. Where you see pictures of girls wanting to, to change the boys. And they have their chest wrapped up so they don't show their breast. They hate their bodies. Where do they get that idea to hate that? A lot of it's social media. Other people going through those things and they don't know how to deal with it yet. But we've got, we've got answers. You can, you can change that. Hormone blockers. Surgery. What's happening, it leads to a lot of other complications and people realize that wasn't my answer. And now I've hurt my body and destroyed a lot of things. Because it's all based upon a lie. And what the Word of God, it helps us see through the error. Why does he say, beautiful are the feet of them that bring you the gospel in Romans 10, 15? It's a quote from Isaiah 52 and verse 7. And we're to indeed prepare our, our shot our feet with the gospel of peace. So there's the feet bringing the gospel of Christ. Have you ever looked at 52 and verse 7? Why that's such good news, and while that is indeed something that we need to get into our children's mind, this is the route that you need to go through the gospel, because at the end of Isaiah 52 and verse 7, the good news is God reigns, not the devil, not you. You can reign in life with Christ. That's the gospel. God reigns. That's what makes it beautiful. And you can instill that into children's hearts as you arm them with the word of God. That God has a way. He made you in your body the way you are and we're going to exalt it. And you're there guiding them in that. Dealing with those emotional changes that are happening in their lives. That's where you are. And you realize Genesis 1.27 is not changing. And you're seeing it doesn't change. Just see the chaos. You want to go that route? You got all sorts of examples, but you're there with them. S sunlight on that fog, get it out of the way. And you may not like things about your body, but we're not going to change it. We're going to exalt it because God tells us how to do that. 
So moral God's word needs to be there. Maybe here it's a shield of faith. With a Roman soldier, it, is a, it was a door. And what it would do, the fiery darts of the enemy would just kind of just extinguish in smoke. That protects the minds of your children. When their faith is doubted, don't doubt it. God reigns and he brings forth salvation through the gospel. We're salvation from sin, salvation from the grave. Don't turn your back upon him. He reigns. Devil's been defeated. How, you, how long would someone as a young child like to say, well, I'll just go the route of the devil. He's been defeated. You want to stand with the defeated foe? All he has left is lies and people who want to exalt themselves instead of God? You see where that leads? And it's a time when we can see the results of things. And people who have gone that route, they're speaking out. Man, transgendering, a woman transgendering to a man. Diabetes, heart failure, all the things he had because he took these drugs. And the social media allows you how to make these, these different drugs that maybe doctors wouldn't want to give you. You make it in your bathtub now. Just get on social media and you can find it. And there they are. And they can already start hiding things from their parents. We can hide that. You've got to get them to realize when you start doubting your faith, here's the, the fiery dart extinguisher. It is indeed the word of God. And you can pray. Don't tell me you don't have time to pray. You spend hours on Facebook. On your social media. You and your children. And you realize, I can spend time with that. I can't spend time with God in prayer. Praying for my children. Watching therein, Paul says in Ephesians 6, 18. Watch therein. And so I need to take the time to pray. And you and I both need that. How we should deal with my situation with my children. But it comes, I'm gearing up. And it comes a time, parents, when you say no. When you don't waver. And you don't give in. And you don't give up. You resist the devil. And what's being implanted in the hearts of your children. And you realize a lot of this is taking place in social media. So what can I do about that? You say no to all those hours they have a right, they, have, they think they have a right to it. Why do they need to have it at night? Lock it up. Some do that. Well, let me have your phone. No, 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 I don't want you to have my phone. Why? You can hide in something? Have control as you, they want the blessings of that. Help them see what, what could I, have faithful teaching that you know is being done. They, they can spend their time looking at that. Not condemning the way messages are being dispensed. It's the fact that this is where they're learning and being despondent and wanting to take their life. Because nobody seems to be happy with things. I found a younger generation. And times when the idea of taking your own life was just something young people wouldn't think about. There's always been teenage suicide. I'm not saying that. The last few years is so critical. And I realize these young people are scared to death that they're going to commit suicide. Because their peers are. You know how you can get people... To not want to take their life, give them something to live for. Give them a faith to live by. Give them a hope to live for in the future. And that's the gospel. That's the word of God. The parents need to stand up and say, no, it, we're not going to go that route. We're going to have restrictions on this. We're going to have overseeing on that. Because a lot of it's coming through that and how your parents are so, they hate you so much because they're against you. 
changing your gender. And that's just one aspect of how the devil can work in our society. And he's working and he's do it, having an impact upon our families, upon our children, upon their future. And that needs to be exposed by the Word of God. And so, at the end, think positive. You know, the dark side of that. Just to think the destruction that's taken in bodies, cutting off healthy body parts because I don't like my gender. The lie has been accepted to get to that point. And all the dislike and of how the way they feel about things, all those things are there. Why not get them to think about good things? Philippians, the fourth chapter and verse eight. Finally, Paul is saying, not only finally in Ephesians six, we need to stand against the wiles of the devil. He said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. What heads the list? Things are true. You're not going to change your gender. You're, both, you're going to be a biological male. I don't go female. We'll have, we'll, have the, we'll have the different hormones and treatment. Have the surgery. And there's so many people that went that route that didn't have the surgery. And they're thankful that mom and dad said no. Because a lot of their peers are saying, yes, this is the answer. And it's not. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are just, think on these things. Is it just for someone to take control of parental authority and parental responsibility? Is that an honorable thing to do to our families? The devil thinks it's fine, and there are plenty of people that are trying to just destroy the nuclear family. So government control. control. So powers that be, they're already in place in this school systems and in colleges. That's the route people will want to go. And you can withstand that. I want them to think on things that are true and honorable and just. And what sort of things are pure and lovely and of good report? The report's not good on what happens to those who go through transgendering. It's not very lovely. It's hurtful. Maybe getting your kids' minds upon that, taking them away from a lot of the influences they may have, understanding that, and getting their hearts filled with the things of God. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, look at the long term. Praiseworthy things, what I want my children to think about and what I'm going to think about and the influence I'm going to have because that's going to be my thinking. And we'll go to battle for the minds of, our, of a precious soul that happens to be your child and your children. So it's not a battle we can't win. We indeed can take on the whole armor of God, God's word and prayer, because we, we can spend time doing all sorts of things. We've already proven that with social media. We, we got hours to spare, apparently. Decrease that. May have some controls over exposure to the outside world of evil influences that are happening. Get our children to be thinking about the word of God and the end God reigns. Don't you be on the side of winners. Because at the end of time, we'll realize that God is in control. And then just the positive things that you can have access to. The media also has to think on spiritual things and, and things that are lovely and a good report. And their truth and what they do, they expose the lies. And they gird your child with something they can trust in. For not only for this life and the life which is to come. There came a time in Timothy's life where his family, they had done what they could. <laughs> They taught him the scriptures from a babe. But he tells Timothy, 
to train yourself to be godly. Godly, attitude, piety toward God. Therefore, we're, all these things will fit in. I reverence God, reverence his word. I pray to him for strength. I think upon things that are excellent and virtuous. That's right, I'm going to go. And what we find there is that we have that, and therefore we're equipped to resist Satan. And, and all the dark things around us, it's not hopeless. Just start where you are, with your little child, with your teenagers, and enter the theater. If you have to go to social media, enter that. Talk about that. What are you looking at? What are they saying? And let me restrict things that they need to be sleeping. They don't need to have just free access to it all 24-7 stuff. You can make rules around your house. And do those things in light of what, where the thinking is taking place. And battle the devil on those ends. And we'll do what we can to raise our children. And maybe help them avoid a lot of things that are going to be disastrous. Not only for their bodies, not only in their lives, but it's also going to be for their souls. So why not train them to be godly because we hadn't finished yet for it has the promise of the life that now is, that godly life, separated from unholiness, living life in purity, but also the life that is to come. In fighting the battles today, you're securing that in their minds as well. And eternity, will, you'll realize God reigns. And I reign with him in life. And eternity will be indeed wonderful. If you have not started your life as a Christian, why not start that? If we need to help you with teaching, we're here to help you do that. But if you're ready to obey the gospel, we're here to assist you. To hear your confession of faith and baptize you into Christ. And if that needs to be something we do today, we'd love to do that today. Come as we stand and as we sing.